Hello right, everyone, how are you doing today? All right, I figured I would just do a quick update. Fast is over. Finally, I did make it. It was um, definitely some ups and downs. It was going much better, you know, initially, and then during the middle, I was feeling like really good. Not cocky, but totally fine, no issues. And then it just, it all kind of fell apart there at the end. It's pretty typical. So, um, but I'll backtrack it a bit, I guess. It was uh, 40 days, 40 nights. Why it has to be 40 days and 40 nights, I honestly don't know. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry, I'm still recovering. It's Like I said, the end of this thing was rough. It started off perfectly fine. And boy, it did not end that way. And the dates, 40 days, 40 nights, I don't know. You know, that's what's in the Bible. I said uh, Moses did 40 days, 40 nights. I think Elijah, was it? And then, um, you know, Jesus, of course. And then I had to do it. So I, it was going so well. The funny part is, like, it was going so well. I'm sitting here thinking, I'm like, you know, Moses, Jesus, uh, Elijah. I'm like, why? Why didn't any of these guys like be like, hey, you know what? This is, eh, let's one up the other, not one up, but you know what I mean. Like, oh, let's go a little further. Let's go 45 days. Let's go, you know, 50 days, whatever. You just think about it. Like, why didn't anyone ever think of that? Like, why didn't they do it? Why 40? It doesn't make sense. I don't, I don't know why it's 40. The numbers in the Bible a lot. And trust me, numerology is absolutely a thing. God, God works in mysterious ways like that with numbers. There's all kinds of patterns out there once you learn to see them. It's everywhere. It's all over. It's They seem hidden, but they're not. They're all over the place. But it's 40. And, you know, even going back a bit further, like, fasting for me, this, I'm probably all over the place in this video. I don't have anything to go by. I'm barely recovered. Like, this is the first time I've felt human in, like, five days now. I've been absolutely horrible the last five days. Even to this morning. This morning... I'll get to it, but I had a rough night. It was awful. Um, but even uh, one of the guys I, I watch online, one of like the online preachers, Vlad, even he was sad. I'm pretty sure it was him. He was like, "Look, you know, you don't, you don't walk into a forty-day fast. You know, water-only fast. To be clear, it's not any other kind of fast. Like, I understand if you know, your head's splitting and you got to take an ibuprofen or, or something like that, but um, it's it's no food. It's just water." nothing else so it's it's a water only fast 40 days i don't know what they're talking about you know in the bible like without water pretty sure you'll die and i'm pretty sure i would have died which wouldn't have done any of us any good so it's water only and it's it was going great but it's brutal towards the end at least it was for me and I don't know if that's the same for everyone or if it was a little different for me than it would be for other people I don't know I'm not sure but the way mine worked out was weird and it ties back to the fact that like you know I'm looking and I'm like oh it's Elijah it's Moses you know Jesus they all fasted 40 days they were basically told to by God or angels or the Holy Spirit they were directed by God or God's agents right to do a 40 day fast as was I if you think that I wanted to drink water and not eat for 40 days if I wanted to do that there's something wrong with you and you should probably see a professional I'm just kidding I'm just kidding just messing around but no I did not want to fast for 40 days I'm not a faster I don't fast I fasted like three times in my life I think one of them was for a medical procedure I had to fast 24 hours. I hated it. I don't like fasting. I like eating. I'm normal, right? They're like eating my three meals and my snacks. I ate way too much. If my weight yo-yoed my whole life, I've definitely had some gluttony issues for sure. And inebriation issues and other things that I've already talked about. Self-control, basically. Self-control issues. If you want to boil it down to one thing. And... Um, so yeah, I've never wanted to fast. So that was the first time we did the uh, 
medical procedure 24 hours. I had to get the uh, GI tract scanned or something. So that was one time. Second time was because uh, it was very recently and I was getting, I told, talk to God every day, right? And have communication and you know, signals, things like that. So I was being directed to fast. And in my mind's eye, I'm thinking, well, fasting, sure. I'll do three days. We'll see how it goes. I've seen in the Bible, right? It says like 40 days you got to fast, Jesus and Elijah and Moses. Yeah, but that's crazy. I'm not doing that. So let's do three days. They want you know, God wants me to fast. Cool. Let's do three days. That's a long time. And it is a long time. If you've never fasted water only three days, it feels like a long time. If you've never fasted, 12 hours might feel like a long time. 24, 36, 48, a week. A week might seem impossible to someone who's never fasted. So 40 days, that's absolute insanity. Who would do that? No one in their right mind. Unless God wanted them to. For God's reasons. Whatever those are. Submission, compliance, obedience, time to, <clears throat> to suffer, to get broken down mentally and physically, I guess, maybe, to change us physically. I know it's an ancient healing technique from thousands of years, so it's been around forever, not forever, but for thousands of years in human history, as we've grown up and evolved and stuff, like that's been part of our journey is you have access to food, you don't have it, you have it, you don't have it. And it also controls our gluttony, which is massive because, you know, we have access to food 24 hours a day now, fast food. So gluttony is a horrible issue because we always have food. You can just sit in front of the TV and just throw food in our face all day long. It's easy. So maybe it's, it's self-control, it's obedience, compliance, whatever you want to call it. I don't know. It sounds insane. But going back to my point, I fasted for three days. And I, I think I mentioned on the last video, I thought it was... Well, I won't say that now. But at the time, halfway through this fast, I thought it was harder. Because I was like clock watching, like, oh, three days. I just felt like I was watching the clock the whole time. You know, maybe in the second day is tough. The first day you're gung-ho. Second day is like, ah, you're starting to get really hungry. And then the third day you're watching the clock. So the three-day fasts are tough for me. At least that first one was. I mean, now I can always relate back to this one and it won't be that big a deal. But, yeah, the three, so I three fasts, right? The 24-hour, the three-day, and then God kept beating me over the head about this 40-day fast. Which, you know, we... Go back to the Trinity and Jesus and the Bible and all that. It's it's kind of required. It's not really optional. Why? I don't know. It just is. I have to ask God when you see him. But um so I got into it. And I was cruising along. And like I said, that guy Vlad, he, he was saying basically like, don't do not do it unless you're called to do it because it's dangerous. You can die. I've read stories about people dying doing these. There's other stories about, um, you know, you should be under medical supervision because your electrolytes, even through the refeeding process, which if you fast for 40 days, apparently it's supposed to take like 20 days of like careful refeeding of your body, like in certain ways. Otherwise, you can throw your electrolytes like totally out of balance and you can have like all kinds of, I don't know, magnesium and phosphate and other things like all over the charts that should not be. And you can, you can really hurt yourself. So you got to be careful with it. God's probably got like a idiot's claws turned on for me. So I might be, <laughs> I might be okay. But um, yeah, you got to be careful with it. And God was calling me to do this. I knew that, right? After the three-day fast, he kept pounding me, pounding me, pounding me, like, look, do it, do it, do it. Kept seeing things, seeing things. So eventually I just did it. And it honestly, like, by the time I got pounded over the head enough, 
you know, it came up on a date that I was familiar with, which is like two seven. Um, just kind of like a kind of like an anniversary date, two seven two eight, two seven really. It was down when I went to the Keys a couple of years ago before this all started, back when I was normal James, up to that point. And that's when it all started um, down in the Keys. So that date was important to me, and oddly enough. However, it all worked out by the time I'd mentally given up and gotten beaten down far enough and given in, I'm like, all right, I'm going to do it, you know? If I'm representing the triangle, the Trinity, you know, the Bible's got all of these, you know, Jesus in there, you got Elijah, you got Moses, you got some key characters. I don't want to get into Moses. I'm not into genocide and I'm not going to go there. I've got my differences with, with the Bible and I've talked about many of those things, but Jesus did it, so I'm going to do it. Do I believe it, that it's in the Bible, because Jesus did it for 40 days? Yeah, I do now. I wasn't there in this body. But I know how this experience played out for me here in 2024. And I can see in this literature, these books that were written by multiple people, all these folks fasted for 40 days and nights. I don't know if it was water only fasting, if they were ate or drink. I mean, if you don't drink water for 40 days, you're going to die. I would have died. So, <clears throat> like I said, I've got my sheer problems with, with some of these, it's a lot of this material. But it is 40 days. And it's 40 nights. And I don't know why. Because I even joked around about it. I'm like, well, it's jokingly, I'm like, let's one-up them. Let's do 45. You know, everyone else wants to do 40. Let's do 45. Let's, let's set the bar a little higher. It's 40. Because even the research I did online, it was saying that you'll know when to break your fast. When your body's signaling you. Like, all you can think about is food. It's all you can think about. About five days before this fast was over, I couldn't sleep at all. All I could think about was food. I would sit in my bed, and it was five days out, so the clock had been ticky, almost like clock watching at that point. I'm not thinking about anything else. Nothing. I don't care about money or shelter, nothing. All I can think about is food. And what am I going to eat? What is the first thing I'm going to eat? I'm just imagining these meals that I'm going to cook in my mind. How great they're going to be. It is overpowering. It, it, it's insane. You cannot even sleep. You were so excited to eat after 35 days. I started to look like one of those people in those... uh POW camp like you'll see those pictures of people that get out of those prison war camps and they come out and they're just like you know skin and bone and everything's sagging down and it's just like you wonder like wow how long did it take to get like that like it doesn't take long you know I don't know what the, how the feeding worked there but in each situation but trust me in about 40 days you can go down to, to rags real quickly so 35 days in when I was cruising, like, I wasn't cocky, but I was confident. I was like, I got this. No problem. I'm going to be just fine. This is easy peasy. Oh, Jesus could have gone 45 days. You know, Elijah, they could have gone 45. Moses could have gone 45. No problem. They could have gone 50. You know, why didn't they one-up each other? Because God said it's 40 days and 40 nights. It's not 45. It's not 42. Not, not 50. It's 40, because five days out, those like food fantasies started and my sleep issues went out of control out of nowhere. I was very confident to this point, I had no concerns. Then I can't sleep. Five days out, my sleep gets destroyed. And I don't know, if you've ever not had sleep for a while, you know you know what I mean, right? Mentally, you're not that clear. You're, you're foggy, like you're irritable, you're agitated, you're hangry, as they call it. 
very hangry. After 35 days, hangry, it, it looks different. It feels different. So that's when it all went downhill. And up to this point, the only thing I really had to deal with that was even close to bad, I mean, it wasn't, it wasn't horrible, but it, it was annoying pretty much the whole time. If I would get up too fast, right? If I would like jump up and try to start walking across the house or something, I would get dizzy spells and I would have to put my hand down and I would almost like faint. Like it, you know, you could hurt yourself. You could fall over. So I had to get really good. And this, that, that was pretty much throughout the fast. After maybe like the fifth or seventh day or something like that, that's about when that happened. So that was the whole time. I was just used to that. I didn't even count that anymore because I was used to it. Didn't affect my driving that I did. Didn't have any problem there. Seating position, no problem. I even was able to volunteer a couple times with Compassion International, great organization. Went out there to a concert. I think it was the Legends Tour. Um, and we helped, uh, I think we got 38 kids signed up in one night. 38 kids had their lives changed hopefully until they're 18 years old, sometimes older, depending on the region where they live um, and the programs they're in. But typically until they're 18 years of age, they'll take care of their <clears throat> their food, medical, um, holistic needs, probably help them out with housing, clothing and things like that. Like it is a massive help for, I think it was $43 a month, which I know seems like, a, I'm getting off topic, sorry. I know it seems like a lot, to us, or to some people, depending on who we are, we're all at different income levels, some of us none, but it seems like a lot to us, and it's not when you compare it to what it does in those regions that it's going to, to those people that it's helping, whom you will get pictures of, you know, and you can, I don't know if they do videos, sometimes maybe a little bit, I'm not sure on the videos, but you'll get pictures, and you can get, they get right to you, and you know, they'll have translators if you have an issue for that. And it's, it's really cool. You can like see what's going on in their village and you can help like send extra money and stuff um, to help out with things. But a great organization. But we helped out in one event that I did back to the volunteering. It was like 38 kids that we helped out at night. So it was awesome. So I was still able to move around. I just couldn't do much. You know, there's, there's no heavy lifting, nothing like that. You're not working out. You're not jogging. None of that. You can walk around a little bit, but you have to keep your, you know, energy expenditures down because you're not eating. Your body's running on ketones. You're running on fat. So all that gasoline we strapped to ourselves throughout our lives, through our, some of us, sedentary lifestyles and sports ball watching and, you know, Netflix and, <clears throat> and everything else, like, it catches up. And our gluttonous eating, because we're just used to having food around all the time. We're just, you know, just eating everything and, and sitting around. It's not really what we were you know, designed to do, but that's the problem with affluence. Even though we might not consider it that, it is. Compared to the people living hundreds of years ago, we're living like kings and queens. Although I hate those terms. So, you know, affluence kind of kills our bodies. And you've got... Um, Indulgence is a huge issue with all of us. So, getting back on topic. Um, you can volunteer a little bit, but that's it. So everything was going fine, aside from the fact that I was getting dizzy. And then, five days out, I started having like food, almost like fantasies. It was just, just food in my brain. It's all I could think about. I couldn't sleep. So my sleep got totally messed up. And I was getting agitated and angry. It's like... It's like the whole fast came together and like all those piles of problems that I should have been having with the fast all piled up on those last five days, but really kicked in three days out. From three days in, awful. It, and the food fantasy, like my sleep, I never got that back. I was never able to sleep comfortably. All I could think about was food. It's it. And like I told you, that guy, like Vlad, that I watch, he's like, basically, look, you'll know when to end the fast because your body will tell you, it'll signal you, right? You need to eat. And granted, 
I was getting signaled early, but that was just the temptation because I already knew I had my orders, right? I already had the orders. So it's 40 days and 40 nights. And I already knew it, and I had the date. Oddly enough, it was going to end up on St. Patrick's Day, if you can believe that. But that's just the way it worked. Because I'd stopped, like, the night before. So the way it was 2-7 was, like, the first, like, full day. So it's going to be, like, St. Patrick's Day was going to be the... Um, the final day and then the next technically the next morning i think it was 7 32 a.m when the sun would come up but either way it was like saint patrick's day was going to be the the last day that was going to be like the victory day oddly enough one of the most indulgent days of the year for some people they sit around and drink themselves near to, <clears throat> near to death on drink like green beer and do all sorts of things they'll regret and eat a bunch of stuff that their body doesn't need I think even in Jacksonville, they had a bunch of people, a couple of people shot. Um, they were down, like, partied under the bridge, I think, and someone got shot and killed, or and some other people got shot. It's drinking alcohol so stupid. That stuff's so nasty. I ruined so many years of my life on that stuff. So, speak from experience on that one. It turns you into a nasty person. Nasty. Brings out the absolute worst in us. And it's legal. And we sell it to each other, and we make money on it. And it turns us into horrible people. It makes us make horrible, sinful decisions while we're drinking sin. Disgusting. I'll never understand why you turn water into wine. Some things I'll never get, but, you know, you don't get all the answers. But, uh, like I said, you, you know, said you'll know when to, when in the fast. So, you know, back to that point I was making about, like, wow, why not do 45 days, you know? Not kind of like one of them, you know what I mean? Like, just do something different. It's 40 days. I don't know why. God doesn't want people getting one-upped, I guess. It's it's 40 days, and it, it absolutely was. I couldn't have gone. I literally thought I was going to die. I felt, it felt like I was dying. Because five days out, the food fantasy started. Sleep got shot out. My mood tanked. I was in an awful, awful mood. I mean, horrible. I... I said some nasty things I shouldn't have said. Cuss words and stuff. I was <clears throat> I was in a bad spot mentally. Real bad. And then three days out, my energy absolutely tanked. And I mean, I had nothing. Ow, ow. It absolutely tanked. I had nothing in the tank. I don't know what happened. It's like the, the floor just fell out. And something gripped my guts. My whole intestines just felt like they were getting ground up. And like squished, crushed or something. I don't know what was happening. But it was an awful feeling. It never went away. It just stayed there. And it kept going. And... I know that they just, whatever it was, wanted me to eat and quit that fast. But 37 days in, and I still had three days to go at this point. It was like three days to go. On a 40-day fast, I know I have to do, right? I have to do the fast. I can't, there's no quitting. And this time, coming from a guy who's only fasted three days in his entire life, who doesn't like fasting. I don't even like the concept of fasting. I didn't. I mean, I, I have a different appreciation for it now. But I'm not a faster. I'm not some Buddhist monk sitting sitting up in some cool cave, like overlooking some valley with butterflies flying all over the place. It's not like that. I'm in a house full of food. You know? I've got a girlfriend. She's a normal person. She eats food. Right? My family, they eat food. Granted, they're cannibals, so they eat animals, and it's disgusting, and I hate living here because of it, but my girlfriend works in property management, so <clears throat> she's got a job that's looking it's looking good currently. We'll see what happens. You never know. I don't know what God has in store for us, but so far it looks good, and she's got a background in sociology, and this job like incorporates um, like tutoring and stuff, which is awesome because that's that's kind of a niche she has. She's done tutoring and she also does property management, so it's a great 
like dovetail the two together. And like I said, looks good, but you never know. We'll see how it turns out. Either way, she's doing some temp work now, so we'll have some income coming in. I know the living situation isn't ideal. It doesn't look great, but, um, well, that's part of the fast also. I'll get, I'll get to that. That's, that's all resolved. Um, <clears throat> but my intestines were like, I don't know how to describe it. It's like they were, like the, all of the intestine linings are just being ground up or something. It was this horrible feeling. And it just kept going and going and going. And it wouldn't stop. It didn't stop. It just kept going. I could barely move. I think the players was on and I've got a professional sports watcher upstairs. So, um, you know, when it comes to like watching crime shows, Fox News and sports, that's all I get to listen to all day long. It's wonderful. And I can't wait to never hear it again. Um, but for now, I'm stuck with it. So I could barely just to spend time with my brother. I would crawl up there onto the couch. And at least... Man, sorry. Oh, I told you I'm still getting over all this. But they had the um, the players was on. So I crawled up there on the couch, and when I could keep my eyes open, I could watch, you know, some of that. I'm just kind of laid on the couch, but, I mean, it felt like I was dying. I mean, I knew I wasn't dying that much. I was sure of that, but, well, I mean, I wasn't like 100% sure of that, because it felt like I was. It felt like I should have, but somehow I figured God would keep me alive, but it it did feel like I was dying, even though I was pretty sure God wasn't going to let it happen. I was kind of hoping for that. And that's how it turned out so far. Um, <clears throat> but it was absolutely awful. So it was kind of in the fetal position. That was the best way I could get my stomach to not get that wrenching, like teeth almost, like chewing kind of sensation. And I had that going on. Absolutely no energy. Zero. I mean, getting up and walking to the bathroom was like something I had to plan out. I had to strategize like, you know, and this is obviously, I'm only talking about, you know, taking a leak, right? You're going number one, right? I don't know if you, you probably never fasted 40 days. Most people haven't. You don't, it's kind of a luxury, but you don't uh, go number two anymore. It's just not something that happens because you don't eat. So after the first couple days, maybe it was like five days in or something, I might have had my last you know, movement and that's it. So you go like 30 some odd days, you don't, you don't go number two, which is very strange. I'm having to get used to actually having to go to the bathroom. It's, it's kind of inconvenient. I'd rather not have to do it, but I don't want to die. So I will eat, but it is nice not having to go to the bathroom. When you only got to take a leak, it's just, it's a cleaner process. It seems like a very gross way to get rid of waste, but that's uh, poor design work, I guess. Part of our uh, punishment being in these bodies, I guess, a little bit. So it was, it was awful. And like I said, I crawled on the couch, fetal position. I didn't have a fever or anything. I just had a stomach that just wouldn't stop grinding or whatever that feeling was. I don't know what that was. No energy and just, I feel absolutely awful. I couldn't think. I was angry about everything. No matter what happened, my anger level was just redlining. I mean, constantly. Anything. It didn't matter. It's like my body was just purging nastiness is what it felt like. Like all the nastiness of my body was just coming out at the, at the same time somehow. And it didn't make any sense because the fast had been going great, you know? I mean, could I have eaten the whole time? Sure. But when you fast for a long time, your stomach does turn off. You're not hungry like someone who's eating every day. You know, your insulin levels, you're not like eating insulin or, oh, sorry, Blood sugar, then insulin brings it down, and you eat some more insulin, blood sugar, or, you know, you know, blood sugar, then insulin brings it down. 
But you're not on that insulin blood sugar roller coaster constantly like we all are. A fat storage, essentially. Um, so you, you, know, you smooth out. It's not, it's really not that bad. And I do, <laughs> do I recommend a 40 day fast for you? Water only? You might want to talk to God about that one. I, I probably wouldn't do that one in, unless you're directed to, because that's a long time. Hey, you could do it for physical reasons. They say like for autophagy and things like that, where it breaks down old body cells and um, you know, replaces them with new ones. Like it's literally an ancient healing technique. Even if you do it for non-spiritual reasons, which I would definitely recommend you do it for both. Why not? You're going to do it anyway. Um, and a lot of people recommend you talk to a doctor. I'm not going to say that's a horrible idea. I probably did not do it the best way. I did get fasting salts about two or three weeks in. I probably waited too late on that. And maybe paid some price for it because I did get these weird feelings and I don't even know how to describe them. This, I should have mentioned this. This was before. This is before like the five days out. <clears throat> it was crazy. I would go to take a, uh, a number one, try to keep this PC. And like, as I was urinating, this pain would like emanate around my hips, like this really bad pain. And then it would slowly like gravitate down to my feet. It was so weird. I don't know what it was. It was very strange. I had some very weird things happen during this fast. And then uh, I got the fasting salts and I thought they were too salty to be quite honest. Was, it's like drinking salt water. It's gross. Like you're thirsty. You can't, you can't get unthirsty. Like you, you can't get your thirst quenched. You keep drinking. You can't get your thirst quenched. But then they say it's because you're not... Your electrolytes are off and you're not storing the water, so just kind of like passing through or something. I don't know. But I would drink that salt water and that didn't seem to help. I just say like, oh, you're surrounded by water and you know, you can't get, it's like drinking salt water, right? You, you can drink all you want. You're still going to be thirsty. That's what it felt like. So you're just like thirsty. And then I had those weird pains and I was urinating and like this emanating pain that like, then it would just gravitate down my legs to my feet. It's so weird. Then I was having these strange like, almost like heat flashes, I guess you would say. Like head pulsing flashes or something. It's really weird. Maybe like menopause or something like that. It could have been like mood related, possibly. Strange stuff. Uh, but the last three days were just absolutely terrible. And wow, that was rough. There's no way I could have gone a day past 40. So yeah. <clears throat> one up in these folks over here and the no no god says 40 days it's 40 days it's not 45 it's not 35 it's not 50 not 25 if you're directed to do one of these which i hope that you're not because i don't know that these are like regular fasts i think this might be a little something different because the date timing on, on when things started to go south for me was just very peculiar. Like five days out, two days of just like uncontrollable like food thoughts just like pouring in. Which to where you can't even sleep. It's just like driving you nuts. And then three days, absolute agony. Out of nowhere, because I've been fine the whole time. I was cruising. I was feeling good, confident. And then for three days, I just got pummeled, absolutely beat down. I could hardly move. I felt like a little baby. I was just in the fetal position, just curled up on the couch, just trying to make it. The mom's in there freaking out. You know, they're trying to enjoy their sports, their Fox News, and I'm just trying to stay alive. I felt like I was dying. That's what it felt like. And I knew I couldn't stop, so it was just I just had to keep riding it. It was awful. And then, I guess we can move on past that. So you, you get the point. It was absolutely terrible the last three days. I don't ever want to go through that again. That was horrible. And then the stomach pains were immense, and like it felt like chewing and pressure, and it was horrible. My whole GI tract, like every little intestine. And then yesterday, 
Um, woke up, almost no energy again, right? And I, and I knew the refeeding period was going to take a while, so I knew it was going to be, be a while. But yesterday was the first day I could actually eat something. So I ate a little bit in the morning, and then, uh, oh boy. Then I made the mistake and had some spaghetti. Not a lot, just a little. But I know that my stomach doesn't like tomato sauce. I know that. But I really wanted some. So I had some. And it tasted like dirt, actually. Which is very odd. And I haven't figured that out yet. There's something going on. I don't know. My taste buds are messed up or something. The tomato sauce tasted absolutely flavorless. It tasted like nothing. Like It was like eating liquid cardboard it tasted that bad and everything almost like when you're sick and your taste buds are like shut down that's what it tasted like it was the worst tomato sauce i've ever tasted in my life and it wasn't sour it just it had no flavor it was bland it was like eating cardboard it was liquefied in water and turned into a paste that's how dull it was nasty <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> uh, but I got down one sandwich worth, a little half sandwich, you know, with the little spaghetti on there. I got down one of those. And then, you know, throughout the day I had, um, sorry to be graphic, but, you know, I did have one movement. And you know how it is in the hospital. They won't let you go until you have a movement. They want to make sure everything's working. So I had a nice, normal, run-of-the-mill what you would expect to see in the toilet. I had one of those. Nothing out of the ordinary. So I was happy. I'm like, this is good. I'm eating. The fast is over. I made it. That was like some kind of religious hell week that I went through in a spiritual sense. And that's why I think that my 40-day fast might be different than like a normal one. But I don't know. Maybe it does that to everyone. I don't know. But it sure felt like there was a little something extra put on mine. It was just choreographed too well to be... I'm, I'm well beyond coincidences at this point in my life. I've, uh, yeah. Once you become a, <coughs> a believer in God, you, uh, you look at coincidences a whole lot differently. Um, but, yeah, just the way it all played out, it, it was like a hell week for me. But I got through it, and it's going to take a little while to recover. I know it takes like half the days that you fasted to get back to like normal. So maybe my taste buds will come back, because well, it's strange. This morning, to do, try to do a little better, I had like a piece of toast, right, with mashed up avocado on there, and like just a tiny little bit of salt. And that tasted totally normal. Now, I don't want to go try spaghetti sauce again, because of what transpired last night. But what I ate this morning was totally fine. But when I ate that spaghetti sauce yesterday, I had it. And I've never had more anything more bland in my life. And it wasn't just bland. Because I know <clears throat> what spaghetti sauce is. It's like my taste buds just wouldn't turn on, wouldn't register. I don't know. They just didn't like it. And last night, that was the worst. A after that normal movement I had, right? And I, th I thought, everything's good. I'm eating again. Fast is done. Boom, boom, boom. We're going to wait a week or two until we get our energy levels back, kind of get back in the swing of things and <clears throat> get back into volunteering stuff. And then we'll see what Amanda, what happens with the job situation, even though she's at least got temp work for now. So things are looking up. But buddy, last night, I woke up and my stomach did not feel good. I had heartburn from that stupid spaghetti that was flavorless and tasteless, like minced up cardboard. That spaghetti, I know it gives me heartburn. <clears throat> And I know I'm not supposed to eat it, but I did. 
And oh, did I pay for it. I, <clears throat> I don't know how many trips I made back and forth to that bathroom. I kept thinking I was done. And it felt horrible. It, it was like there was something in my body that really wanted to get out. Really wanted to get out. And it found an opening and it tore its way out of my body. Over and over and over. All throughout the night. I don't know. It had to have been, had to have been at least two hours. It had to have been. It absolutely felt that way. I would run in there as fast as I could run without losing anything. Just fetal position over the toilet. You know how, I'm sure you've had nights like that at some point in time. I don't want to get, just trying to be descriptive. It was really bad. Awful. Horrible pains. You just, you can imagine. Finally get that worked out each and every time. You think you're done? You know? Clean up, you wash your hands, you're like, wow, that was horrible. Let's go back to sleep. Go back to bed. Ten minutes later, you're back in there. And it repeats, and it repeats, and it repeats, and it repeats. Eventually, when it finally stopped, <clears throat> the only time it stopped, <clears throat> oh man, <clears throat> the only time it stopped, I finally gave up. I got some towels out of the closet and I took a towel and I made a pillow on the floor in the bathroom. And I laid out another towel to lay on it in the fetal position in the bathroom. Because I wasn't going to be clowned again. God or whomever. Somebody was playing with me. They would let me get completely done. Finally feel better after feeling like something was, like I had an alien tearing its way out of my body through my rectum. And when that was finally done each time, and it felt like it was done, and my stomach was settled, I would crawl back into my nice warm bed. And I would try to go to sleep. And then it would happen again. And again and again, and the cycle continued. The only time it stopped is when I finally gave up. And I put a towel down in the bathroom, and I made a little bed with another towel. And I curled up in the fetal position and I laid in the bathroom after the last thing was expelled. And I turned the light off for maybe 10 or 15, I don't know, maybe 10 minutes. It wasn't too long. Finally, it stopped. When I finally gave up and just made a little bed in there, like a little... You know, it's like a little barnyard situation there. I just made it in there. That's when it finally stopped. Or I just got really lucky on when I built my little makeshift bed in the bathroom. One of the two. But I don't know. I, I'm not big on, uh, you know, things just happening anymore. Timing is, is very important. Coincidences. Not, not a huge fan of those anymore. When you start looking for signals and signs and things, you'll, you'll figure it out. But it finally stopped. So I came back to bed, and I finally got in bed. Then I got a couple hours sleep, and then we got up, and I had to take her <clears throat> to the temp agency. And she's over there. She's good. And now I'm back here, and I'm finally... <clears throat> this is the first time I've been well enough to make a video... To even, I don't even think, like, I was being so good. I was keeping, like, all of my, uh, it's not like much, but I had this little thing here. And I was kind of keeping all my notes in here for my fasting. And I was keeping, like, my uh, ketone levels and my sugars and 
blood pressure. I was tracking like every day. But when I got into those last five days, no. I lost track of all that. I never got out. My ketones never, I don't think I ever hit eight. I think I always was like seven, six, seven, seven, somewhere in that range. It's like the highest I ever got. I don't think I ever got into like a scary range. But I don't think my ketones ever got into the eights. They were like high seven, something like that. So that's good. My sugars were always low, you know, 60, 70, 80, mainly like 60 or 70 towards the end. So sugars were good. Ketones were fine. I never had any issues. I was checking. I wasn't like completely unsupervised. I was supervising myself, you know, as safe as that is. Um, but yeah, I didn't even track any entries. So during the worst part of this fast, I didn't track any of my symptoms because I couldn't. I was too angry to track them. I was too upset too hangry, too sick. The last three days, there's just, I couldn't do anything. I couldn't drive. There's no way, not during those last three. Like I was in horrible shape. It was awful. If I could have driven, maybe, maybe it would have been like to Publix or something like that, like right up the road, but I don't think so. I think Amanda was doing the driving then because I was, I was completely out of it. I got knocked on my butt and I was cruising. I thought I was good to go no issues even the food like they weren't normal food thoughts it was like it was like they were just being pumped in food temptations whatever you want to call them <clears throat> they were uh heavy very very heavy so it's like food fixation if you will something like that like just food, food, food. so much that i couldn't sleep and whenever I was trying to sleep, there was just like food thoughts like being pumped in. And then that started the agitation and the lack of sleep and everything just tumbled out of control from there. And then my health from three days in was gone. Shot out. Stomach was in pain the entire time with that chewing motion, whatever that was. And now my taste buds, I don't know what's going on with those. They're, they're like broken. Which maybe is a good thing because apparently I can't have spaghetti sauce. I already knew that because that's torn up my stomach because I had years of drinking, you know, that erodes like your esophagus and your stomach lining and everything. So all those years of drinking didn't do me any good at all. And terrible eating habits, you know, on top of that. Um, probably mainly alcohol though. Um, but yeah, even though I love tomato sauce, I just can't do it anymore. So maybe not being able to taste it, maybe that's not the worst thing in the world for me, but it could just be temporary. But I won't find out for a long time. Maybe, hopefully, I can eventually have, um, <clears throat> hopefully, have like sliced tomatoes. But I'll have to check that down the road somewhere. But no tomato sauce. But yeah, after after last night, wow, I'm gonna have to catch up on some sleep tonight. And that's it. So now I think I'm okay. I'm, I'm <clears throat> coming out of it, and this it's dragging on a bit. But sorry. So I think I'm coming out of it feeling better. I still got to clear some stuff out of my system. I'm not right yet. I'm still a little messed up. Um, but my energy is coming back. I'm starting to get my energy back so I can get out volunteering and stuff again once I'm okay. I've got enough energy to walk around and drive and stuff like that, but I can't do anything real big right now. And hopefully eating will get easier and we'll see what happens with the taste buds. I don't know what that's about. That's kind of a weird symptom. Other than that, the brain fog is going away. I feel you know, somewhat okay, and hopefully that'll get better as the next week or so goes on. Should get back to normal. Weight-wise, <clears throat> I definitely lost some weight. Um, I don't want to do any, like, shirtless pictures or anything, but it's nothing too impressive. I'm off all the muscle mass, of course. I know a lot of that's water weight, because glycogen, I think, stores a bunch of water grams or something. So I lost, I'm down to 145. I think I started, uh, I'll have to look. I don't know if it was one, 170 or something when I started. Probably lost like 30 pounds maybe, something like that. I'll go look, but yeah, it's like, it doesn't matter. You know how water weight is. Some of that's gonna come back as soon as I start to eat again, even though my diet will be different here. I'm gonna try to get, I need to get into a nice, um, more natural way of eating. A lot of the less of the processed fake meats, and I was never big into those. My girlfriend is, and I, 
some people just are. I mean, they're they're not healthy. They're not I'm not saying they're good for you. Compared to eating meat, do it. Transitioning, hey, you need a year to get used or whatever. Just do it. It's better than than murdering animals, 100%. Okay, so I got no problem with that. Is it better to eat all natural fruits and vegetables, and grains, right, legumes, nuts and seeds? Yes, absolutely. That's what we should be eating. <clears throat> I should be eating more like that. Things are natural, easy for my body to break down. What we're designed to eat. Um, but I do have some like more like processed cans and stuff that I got to get rid of. So get that out of the house. Get that, you know, at least use it or get rid of it, whatever. And then just start buying natural products. And I got, you know, I showed you this one of those great cookbooks. So you can do everything. Like one thing that always held me back is like the sauces at the store. Like I would always get the sauces and they're loaded with sugar. But I would always get the sauces because it's like, oh, I don't know how to make that. They have recipes for all that stuff. The thing with veganism is you need to learn how to cook. That's that's the problem. Veganism isn't tough unless you don't know what a kitchen looks like and you don't have a food processor or like um, like one of those Nutribullet, not a particular brand, but like a personal mixer uh, emulsifier, food processor, things like that, you know, blender, like just basic things. Like if you're going to be a vegan and you're going to be cooking out of the garden, your fruits and vegetables, things like that, and fruit, you know, nuts and seeds and all that, you're going to have to make sauces. You're going to have to make dinner. You're going to have to learn to cook. Like our ancestors used to learn how to cook. They knew <clears throat> because they had to, they were naturalists. Well, we're going to have to remember how to cook. A lot of us have forgotten it, including my family. Trust me, I get it. People have gotten so used to, myself included, right? We've gotten so used to easy, processed, convenient, crap food. Garbage, processed, junk food. And we've gotten away from the love of cooking. Or not even cooking. Most, and some people are even like more raw. They like things raw, just chopped, right? Just chopped up and put in there with like a light glaze on it or something like that. That's perfectly fine. But we have to get back to eating out of the garden. And to do that, you have to learn to cook. And we have to lose our fascination with fast food. Because fast food will be a very fast way to put you in the grave. Or a hospital, which the medical industry will profit from greatly. Along with, you know, the pharmaceutical industry, they love it. They love fast food. Why? Because it keeps you sick. Why do you think they give you fast food in a hospital? You never have to leave. You can eat McDonald's there, have a stroke, they'll fix you. You can check out, but before you leave, you can get you a cheeseburger, get you a murdered animal, and put it on a bun and eat it, and poison your body. Then you can go back to the hospital. And then they can put you on medication for the rest of your life. And you can pay for pharmaceuticals. It's a great system they have set up. They give you fast, convenient food that makes you sick and kills you slowly. But not always slowly. Sometimes quickly. It's a stupid system we have. <clears throat> and it's because of convenience. We love our convenience. We don't want to take the time to learn how to cook to buy a cookbook, to look at a cookbook online. We don't want to take the time to cook our food and like understand our food and put it together ourselves and make our sauces and, and put it all together and enjoy it. Enjoy the act of cooking, you know, with our families. Just that, that whole act of like getting around in the, in the family kitchen, you know, and making the food together and communing together and having that meal together. It's kind of a lost art. Not for all, not for all but for many, for many people. They'd rather go get a box of murdered chickens from the store and throw it on the, the counter there and then everyone can sit there and eat all their trans fats and grease and disgusting salt and whatever else and that, that murdered flesh. And they can sit around like cannibals, eat it, and throw the bones all over the house. It's uh, welcome to this world. But thankfully we're on the upswing. We're just going through a rough period. But on the upswing, that's good. I'll wrap this up. It's going long, and I would expect it to. Um, so I went through the story. Sorry, some of it's graphic. It's kind of a weird post, so <clears throat> this may not be your bag. 
So if it isn't, sorry. But that's what happened. So I didn't end up one-upping, you know, Elijah or Jesus or Moses. It's 40 days. 40 days, 40 nights. Uh, personally, would I recommend doing it? And unless God directs you to or the Holy Spirit or, you know, in some way you're seeing this, right? God's somehow telling you to do this. You feel it. Uh, it's, it, can be, it can be dangerous. Be very careful. Like, should you be supervised? Maybe. Go talk to your doctor. But here's the thing. Doctors, at least current doctors in the country that I'm in, I would guess that most of them aren't going to advise you to fast. Because what do doctors do? Honestly, what does your doctor do? They give you drugs. That's what your doctor does. It looks like a family doctor, right? They might give you a little advice. They might say, well, eat healthier. Here's drugs. What else can they do? Uh, here's a pamphlet on stretching. Here's some pills. They're going to give you drugs. They're like drug dealers. Because they probably get tired of telling people to eat healthy <clears throat> because they know they're wasting their time because of all the advertising getting pumped down your face and watching you know, your sports and television and all this stuff. Like, food advertising is everywhere. People love convenience, so. But that's their job, is they, is they give you drugs. So that's what they're gonna do. So if you, you say, oh, I wanna fast because of, I want my body to go into autophagy and I wanna break down old cells. It's like an ancient healing technique. And they probably have, they'll have, probably have no idea what you're talking about, unless they've looked it up. But if your doctor doesn't fast, chances are they're not gonna recommend fasting because they don't know anything about it. So you may want to go to a fasting doctor to check into that. That probably makes the most sense. Or fasting gurus, whomever. Whomever does that sort of work. Um, shorter term fasting, I would definitely recommend, you know, because it's going to reset the way that you think about food. It's going to retune all of your indulgences, if you will. Right? All that gluttony in you, you'll turn it off for a short while. And you'll see what life looks like. And you're not chasing food around all day long. From meal to snack, to meal to snack, to meal to snack, to meal to snack. Just like riding the food wave all day long. And then a snack before bed. Like, it's just gluttony. And then we all end up carrying all that stored energy gasoline jugs, aren't fat, all over our body for our whole lives. Which causes all sorts of health impacts. And mentally, it can make you feel differently about yourself too, right? So, it has psychological impact too. But that's my 40-day fast story. It was going really well. I was not cocky, but I was confident. I was feeling great. Having some weird things. Got some, some of those fasting salts maybe like two or three weeks in, something like that, because I started to have some weird pains when I was urinating. Very strange. Never felt them before, like shooting down my leg. Very strange. So probably did something wrong there with my electrolytes. I didn't, you know, didn't research it the best, but, you know, thankfully God watches out for me. And, um, and that's it. And then about five days in, the wheels came off and then I got crushed. And I got to the point, I just, I couldn't sleep. All I could think about was food. And then three days in, somebody just turned on the pain and everything went south. My intestines were like gnawing and on fire and I couldn't sleep. I was fetal position, zero energy crawling around the house like dizzy spells absolutely horrific i never want to feel like that again ever um but that's how i knew that it's 40. you know as much as i would have liked to have said well you know what <clears throat> let's do something a little different let's do 45. let's do 42. you know let's let's be a little different let's shake it up a bit God didn't want 42. He didn't want 43 or 44. He didn't want 45. He wanted 40 days and 40 nights. So, do I think there's something to this 40 days and 40 nights that these folks went through? Yes. Were they called to do it for that long? Well, I would have to say yes. 
Who in their right mind would want to fast for 40 days? Maybe, you know, a Pharisee, someone like that who likes to hang that pride on their shoulder, walk around like, oh, I'm fasting for God, I'm religious. And, you know, you grew up in a pulpit your whole life and your whole life is like, oh, I'm just, I'm just this super important religious person and you should look up to me and I'm so sacred. Yeah, maybe to those people they were just like a sign of pride, but trust me. I never, I would have bet you every dollar I would have ever made in my life, back when I would bet, when I was younger, I would have bet you every dollar I would never have fasted 10 days in my life, much less 40. Absolutely not 40. Not even 10. First time, I had to, medically. I needed 24 hours so they could go check my GI tract. Second time, I thought I was compromising with God. It's like, you want to fast? No problem, I got you. I got three days for you. So I did a three-day fast. <clears throat> and it was, a, <clears throat> it was a nice primer. It was good. It was good for me. It's never a bad thing to fast for any amount of time. If all you can do is three days and you're starting, there's nothing. That's great. All you can do is 24 hours and you want to do it like in sections. You want to do one day. Then you want to do three days later and then four, five, however you want to, it doesn't matter. It's all good. All of it teaches you self-control. And it shows God that you have self-control over your indulgences, right? You can say no to food and say no to sex and say no to other things and drugs and alcohol and swearing and all kinds of things, right? All the sins. It's saying you have self-control and can live within the covenant. <clears throat> Which I'll get back. That's another weird thing. That's one thing after the fast, too. This one's off topic. But, like, clearly, this living situation here, like, by Christian standards, is not ideal. We did get the other bed, right? But, and... We've pretty much had this worked out for a while now, but being part of that triangle, um, there are certain things that you don't get to do. Even though you're a regular human being, you know, for all, it's a regular person. Clearly, you know, because of how that works, there are things you can't do. So even though it doesn't look great, it doesn't really matter for me because there are things I don't get to do that normal people get to do. And that's just it's clear, you know? <clears throat> Jesus didn't get to do them. I don't get to do them. Doesn't mean that you can't have people in your life. They're just things you can't do because of how that whole structure works. And obviously, that's a bit awkward if you think about it. How the Trinity works. Like, you can't... Yeah. So, it's, it's not an issue. Just to let you know, that's not an issue. Got all those things worked out. And that is part of it. It's like I got so much clarity from this because of I completed it and like how awful it was at the end and how I'm quite certain that was not coincidental that I got run over like a truck towards the end. And then last night I get kicked down the street just for old time's sake. And you got me curled up in the fetal position in a bathroom, sleeping on a towel. And then you stop beating me. But I do feel better now. So I think I think we're good now. But um, yeah, so the situation doesn't look great. But like I said, we're looking at places, two bedroom. It's all, it's, it's a non-issue. Um, but that's it. So I got through the fast. I'm not dead yet. I don't figure, out, I'm feeling a lot better now. So I don't think I'll have electrolyte problems that throw me in the hospital or anything at this point. I'll, I'll be careful and... 
I'll stay away from the spaghetti sauce because apparently I can't have it. Taste buds don't even let me taste it anymore, so I guess it's a pretty pretty clear sign. That's it. I just want to give you an update. Um, so I hope everyone's doing great. You know, I, I don't know when the next video will be. We'll see. I need to be feeling better, and then I'll see what strikes me. And I've got you know some reading to get through that I'm working on right now. It's good. I have my same um, complaints about the material, some of the things that are said. I, I comment online on that, so I think you have an understanding which which parts I agree with and don't agree with. <clears throat> but just remember that God does love us and wants to provide guidance to us to help us to get through this and to make it through, right? God wants to show us the way. And once you know the way, you got it. At that point, it's up to you and me and all of us, right? Like once we have the rules, we have to follow them. Because if you don't follow them, what happens in the real world? You get speeding tickets. You go to jail. Sometimes you go to prison. Bad things happen, right? You could die. Right? <clears throat> Depending on how bad you are, the penalties increase. They stack up. They get worse, right? That's how it works. That's called justice. God is just. Just doesn't mean... You get everything you want. Trust me on that. You don't. But God is fair. So if you follow all the rules and you're a great person and you bring people into the fold and you show others the way, you know, to God, to holy living, you'll be treated great. When will that happen? I don't know. It's between you and God. It's based on your history. Right? Right? Sometimes we don't remember all of our history, things that we've done that maybe weren't that great, that maybe we need to pay for or make amends for things, right? Repent. That's something you have control over. Things you've done wrong that you can remember, you repent. And you let God know how sorry you are and how you'll never do them again. But more importantly, that you don't do them again. Saying it's, it's nice, especially when you mean it. That is nice. But when you follow through, that says everything. So repentance is 100% in your control. Atoning for it, 100% in your control. Things you've done wrong to people you can make up for. Or groups of people, or regions, or <clears throat> any number of things. Right? You made fun of poor people, you, you, you spit on them. Whatever horrible things you've done, like you can make up for that. You can go help them. You can help people. Help the planet. Help the animals. Those are all God's creations. God created the earth, all of us, the animals, everything. They're God's animals. They're not ours. That's why you can't go around eating them. But it's never too late, even if you're a really, really bad person. It's never too late to start to make amends. And to repent. So I don't care if you're in a prison cell right now. With 10 life sentences. And you've done some of the most awful things in the world. It's never too late to start to make amends. Some way, somehow, you can start to help someone. Anyone. In your situation. Find someone that you have access to and help them. That's how you start. And then you just build out from there. Just keep helping. You want to be on God's team? <clears throat> help God. There you go. You're on the team. He hires everyone. All you have to do is apply for the job and show up. <clears throat>